Hello everybody and welcome to the channel Out of Ammo, Out of Time. I'm your host Krabby Terra 8 and here we are in part 29 of the season 1 of the Investigator Games. Yes, and here we are with everybody's favourite bounty hunter, our friend Tony Morgan. Yes, and Tony will be going through the gathering today. So what makes the Investigator Games the Investigator Games? Well, we take each Investigator true solo and we put them through a scenario. And in Season 1 of the Investigator Games, that was the gathering. Uh, we have been proceeding through the Midnight Masks with the Investigators, but I thought it would be a good idea to pop back to Season 1 with the new um, Dream Eaters uh, expansion and put those investigators through with their starter decks. And we'll see how they go. And they, depending on how they go, they end up in a league table like this one. And we can see here that uh, there's uh, quite a spread of performances of the different investigators. Uh, with a few at the top, and indeed Tommy, who was uh, we went took through the gathering last time, uh, first uh, Dream Eaters uh, investigator did really well. We didn't really use his special abilities, but he uh, he did well uh, with his guardian cards nonetheless, and pretty quickly. Not the quickest, but close to. So uh, he did pretty well. So uh, it'd be interesting to see how Tony goes at this time. So, um, yeah, I, I haven't spent a lot of time looking at Tony and his stuff, so I'm sort of looking at this in real time as we speak. Um, so let's just have a look at what, what he's on about. So obviously he's a, uh, he's a rogue character, survive, not survivor, a rogue character. His stat line is interesting because he's all about fight with a fight of five. Now that's normally what you would expect from a, uh, a, a guardian uh, but uh, Tony is uh, very much um, as he's, tra he's he's a criminal and hunter traded uh, so he is a bounty hunter so very good on fight not too bad in terms of intellect so getting clues is kind of okay but he's pretty pretty low on willpower and agility so those are not strengths for him so he is very much a fighter and indeed um, his special abilities and his special cards uh, are really oriented towards that and being a bounty hunter. So he gets, as, as you would expect from a bounty hunter, he gets additional resources for killing uh, enemies with bounty hunter uh, bounties on them. So he, uh, you can take an additional action during your turn, which can be used to engage or fight with an enemy with one or more bounties on it. So you, you can use that additional action uh, to do that, which is which does tend to be more of a, a rogue type character. Um, and uh, and uh, his his elder sign is similar, so he gets uh, plus two to that, but he can place a bounty. Um, when I find that beast, I'll put it down for good. Now, um, it's hard to not. It's hard to talk about the bounties without um, talking about this permanent. Um, so Tony has this permanent here that sits on his um, to the side here, which is bounty contact bounty contracts, I should say. Uh, he has six on here, and it has a reaction trigger after an enemy enters play. Move one to three bounties from bounty contracts to that enemy to a maximum of that enemy's health. Uh, after you defeat an enemy with one or more bounties on it, move its bounties to your resource pool as resources. So essentially, there's six resources that can be gained um, from the bounty contracts. Uh, it's up to you how you might distribute them. I mean, in the in the gathering, there's never a lot of monsters or enemies, so you, you might want to move a few more. But there's some discretion about how you do it. So do you go after one uh, with more, or do you kind of spread them out? The important thing is um, with the bounty contracts is that uh, which is not it's less of an issue in solo, but um, uh, I think it's here. Sorry, is forced after you defeat an enemy. So um, in a multiplayer, you can have some unfortunate situations where you're trying to 
defeat a monster, but somebody else does that instead, you wouldn't get the bounty. So um, there's a bit of negotiation required there to let Tony do some of the uh, some of the killing, if you like. So I can imagine perhaps um, you know particularly some conflict between say Zoe and Tony if they were in the same scenario. Although I suppose one gets the resources from engaging whereas Tony gets the resources from finishing them off. But uh, you can imagine there would be some um, contradictions or, or some, some conflicts there at times, but that's not going to happen, obviously, in uh, in Solo. Okay, so that's that's Tony. Uh, he's very strong on, on health. He feels more like a guardian in some ways. Let's, uh, let's flip him over. Just have a look here. So uh, he can choose Guardian, Seeker, and Survivor cards. So he's so a mix of both. Um, oh, sorry. Sorry, I'll read this again. So he, he has to choose a secondary class uh, at Deck Creation, Guardian, Seeker, or Survivor. And then he can use Rogue, rogue cards, Neutral cards, um, and uh, not to one events or skills from your chosen secondary class. Uh, Tony's tracked down low-life scum in every lousy corner of the world, but nothing could have prepared him for the thing he killed in Innsmouth. It had the form of a man, more or less, but it was covered in loathsome scale and slime, like some horrid creature of the deep. It stank of salt water, rotten fish, and blood. He should let it go when it drove into the water, but he'd never let a bounty escape before, and wasn't about to start then. Ever since, he's found a new kind of dirt bag to hunt. Ordinary mobster or otherworldly monster, Tony will take it down if someone is willing to pay him for it. So there you go. The thing that's a little bit unsure is why he's a criminal hunter. It doesn't feel like he's doing anything criminal here. He's a bounty hunter. Um, it's kind of unclear, I suppose. Um, yes, I, I had the benefit of t talking to Tony before starting the Investigator Games, and he is very gung-ho. He asked me why he doesn't get paid, in fact, for being part of the Investigator Games. And I said, well, fame and notoriety are probably the big benefits, but he wasn't happy about that. Anyway, he's hoping he gets lots of monsters so that he can uh, claim the bounties and claim the cash. Uh, he's a bit vague on why he needs the cash. Is it just day-to-day -day living expenses or something else it's not clear so there we go there's, t there's tony morgan Let me just write this a little bit put this down here um yeah so let's uh let's have a look at his um let's have a look at his starter deck so this is the official fantasy flight game starter deck uh they have decided to make his secondary class uh, guardian which rather than survivor Fair enough. That actually rounds things out quite nicely. So I have to say his deck is pretty good. Um, obviously, um, he's got he's got a Derringer in there, but interestingly, uh, and flashlight and a switchblade. So he's got some of those things. But interestingly, he has uh, he has his um, Tony's thirty eight long Colt. There's two of them. So um, they have three ammo. After you play Long Colt, play another one from your hand at no cost. So you can pull them both out if you have them at the same time. Um, although that's interesting because normally if you got one, unless you got them both at the same time, you would probably play one rather than waiting to get the other one. So I'm not sure that's such a big thing. Uh, he can spend an ammo and fight and get plus one for each bounty on an attacked enemy. So again, it makes sense for him if he's got this out to have bounties. It deals plus one damage and this attack defeats an enemy with more bounties. Place one bounty on bounty contracts. So um, that's quite a nice, nice little refresh there for Tony if he's got his long colts um, out. So... Having something uh, like prepared for the worst, for example, would be really handy if you're um, playing Tony, but not in this particular deck. Um, then we have this Crystallizer of Dreams, um, which essentially is quite good. It allows you to put events on the Crystallizer of Dreams. And they can be committed skill tests, very nice. Um, and at the same time, it brings out a, it puts a monster into your deck. 
the guardian of the crystallizer, which for Tony is good because that's another opportunity for some bounty hunting. So a little bit like with Zoe, he actually welcomes fights rather than avoid them. Um, so those are some new cards there. Leo De Luca, obviously, it would be nice to have two, but it's a starter deck. Then we've got Burg or Hard Knox, pickpocketing the usual, um, the usual uh, suspects uh, in these starter decks for rogues. The bounty contracts we already discussed. It's also got a backstab, a dodge, and a dynamite blast, and an elusive, all very welcome. Uh, a couple of emergency clap caches and evidence, which is always welcome uh, for getting clues. A sneak attack, very nice. And then lots of neutral uh, cards like Guts, Manual, Dexterity, Overpower and Perception and Opportunist. So nice. Um, all pretty standard stuff. So, but, you know, I think, you know, some of these starter decks can be really awful. This one seems pretty good. A bit like Tommy's one. Pretty good as well. Uh, the big issue with Tommy's one was we never really got to use any of his special abilities. be interesting to see whether that happens with Tony. Uh, we also uh, drew a Paranoia, uh, which is guard all your resources. It's kind of appropriate. And Tony's quarry is uh, another monster. Um, it's a humanoid deep one. It's got fighter four, health three, evade one. Uh, let's just bring it up. Here it is. Uh, it's aloof. So it just kind of spawns furthest from Tony Mong. This is a bit, little bit like a Zoe thing, a little bit, with her um, Smite the Wicked. Uh, this is a little bit different because this just spawns somewhere far away. Uh, it's aloof. Uh, and after Tony's quarry enters play, place a Doom on it, then place a resource on it as a bounty. So it kind of is encouraging you to run off. And a bit like with Zoe, when she gets Smite the Wicked, um, end up kind of running off and doing something which isn't probably part of the core uh, set of objectives for a particular scenario. But it's sort of, you know, it's those things. Tony and Zoe are both are both killing monsters because they feel compelled to. Zoe obviously is compelled to for religious and other reasons. Tony, it's for, for money. So that's the difference between the two. Again, it's not clear why he needs so much money. It would be, you know, it's not like he's paying off hospital debts and things like that. But uh, yeah, it's it's um, it's he's almost like a kind of a, a rogue version of Zoe in a way. So there we go. That's Tony Morgan's starter deck. Interested to think what you think about it. Uh, seems pretty good to me. Uh, be surprised if it doesn't do reasonably well in the gathering. Uh, so we'll see how we go. So let's, whoops, that's not what we want to do. Let's put that back. Well, we don't really need this, but anyway. Okay, so let's go back. We're here ready to roll in uh, in Tabletop Simulator. Um, we're here in the gathering now. I've put all of the cards out so we don't have to mess around with them later, but we're here obviously in the study with two clues with a shroud of two. And here's Tony. Um, and we're up here with in turn one. Let's shuffle up the encounter deck and let's just read out so, so get things going. So agenda 1A, what's going on? It's late at night and you're holed up in your study, researching the bloody disappearances that have been taking place in the region. Could you make money out of this? Could you find the culprits and bring them back to justice and earn a bit of cash, a bit of coin. Who knows? A few hours into your research, you hear the sound of strange chanting coming from your parlour down the hall. At the same time, you hear dirt churning as if something were digging beneath the floor. And trapped, as you leap to investigate, the door to your study vanishes before your eyes, leaving behind only solid wall. You're trapped inside your study until you can find another way out. There we go. So we're trapped in the study, as per usual. Here we are, three actions. What do we want? Let's draw our opening hand. What do we want? What do we want? What do we want? Well, I think uh, we definitely want Leo De Luca. That will make a massive difference because obviously that's an extra uh, turn and that always makes a difference. So we can get Leo in our opening hand. I'd be very happy about that. He's pretty, he's pretty heavy on the resources, but he's worth it. I wouldn't mind one of Tony Morgan's cults because that kind of plays into his whole bounty hunt kind of thing. Uh, obviously, things like 
uh, flashlights or evidence so we can get clues quickly because this is the investigator games and the quicker we do things the better would also be welcome i think they're the main things i mean vicious blow would be good for when we get to the ghoul priest as well so anyway let's shuffle it up and see what we get and we draw our five cards and um hmm, it's a bit a bit underwhelming to be honest uh nearly a deluca the 41 derringer is there um a flashlight is there i don't know i don't feel too happy about uh, all of these to be honest i'm actually inclined to i'm going to put them all in because i feel like we can draw a much better hand than that um although maybe we should keep the flashlight maybe because the cellar is a is a real pain to investigate so i might keep the flashlight but i'm going to I'm going to draw four more. So let's draw four new cards. Okay. All right. Yes. Okay. That's not great. I mean, the vicious blow is welcome. I'm glad we kept the flashlight. Um, I wish we'd now kept the Derringer because we don't have a weapon, which is a real pain. We're supposed to be a bounty hunter and we haven't got a weapon. <laughs> So that's a bit of a pain. Uh, Crystallizer of Dreams is good, except the only event card we have has no pips on it. So, um, you know, you can commit it to skill test. Well, that's no good. But, you know, we might get other things anyway. So a pretty underwhelming start for poor old Tony, I'm afraid. Um Yes, so uh, so we are here in the uh, study. So what are we going to do first? Well, <sighs> I suppose uh, first action. Let's um, let's just do some setup here. So first action, I am going to bring out the crystallizer of dreams because why not? So we bring out the crystallizer. Additional cost for this kind of play. You must search your bonded cards for a copy of the guardian, and shuffle it into your deck. Well, there you go. Do that. Is there two here? Yes. Only want one. I think I just put two there just in case. Uh, so we'll shuffle that into our deck. Um, after you play an event, attach it first. Okay, so we can put it there. All right, so that's our first action. Uh, that's our first action. Our second action is to pay two and bring out the flashlight. Yeah. And um, see pickpocketing after you evade an enemy. Well, we're a two. Why would we be evading enemies? So pickpocketing is is an example. I didn't say this before. The card that doesn't really fit with Tony. Tony's a fighter. He's all about fighting and getting bounties. He's got a two agility. Why would he even try and evade an enemy? So why pickpocketing in there? There's, like surely there are better cards than that. That just feels like they're not really. And they put these starter decks together, they're not really paying much attention to these things because this card just feels totally out of place in Tony's starter deck. But anyway, uh, and then for a third action, yeah, I'm going to put in the emergency cash. So I think you put this underneath the Crystallizer of Dreams. And even though you can't play it, it's an event. So after you play an event, attach it face down. Okay, so we get three. Hello? There we go. There's three, is it? Not two. Sorry, I shouldn't have this. Yeah, of course it's three. Second guessing myself. Okay, so those are our three actions. So it's kind of a bit of a boring start for uh, Tony Morgan. Basically, all we did was brought out the Crystallizer of Dreams. We brought out the flashlight and then we emergency cash to bring um, us back to five. So with any luck, we're going to get some weaponry and then next time we'll get out of the study. So we move into the enemy phase. There are, of course, no enemies to speak of. So we move into the upkeep phase. So we will flip these over. We will take another resource and uh, we will draw a card. <laughs> draw into another flashlight. Oh, it's going to be one of those games, isn't it, where all the cards we want are all probably at the bottom. Anyway, 
All right, so that's the end of the upkeep phase. So we move into the mythos phase. Let's um, let's move up here. First doom on the table. Turn two. Let's move this over here. So turn two. First doom is down. So let's shuffle up the encounter deck and see what the good old encounter deck has for us. And it has a rotting remains. So we get a rotting remains. Uh, test three, yeah, we're at two, and I don't think we have anything to commit to this particular card. So we're starting at minus one. Let's see how we go, and we get an Elder Sign. Wow, so we get plus two. Place one bounty on, on bounty contracts. I think that's, yeah. So, uh, okay, so we pass. Fantastic. Uh, that was unexpected, and we can put another bounty. Uh, I'll just, oh, I'll just put one on from here, don't we? So there we go. We got an extra bounty. Very nice. That's right, isn't that? Plus two, plus one bounty on bounty contracts. Very nice. So we've got seven of them now. Just no monsters to actually put them on. So I think when monsters do appear, we'll just load it up. So there we go. So uh, rotting remains. No big deal for Tony Morgan. Let's move into the investigation phase. Okay, so here we are. It's a shroud of two and we are a three, minus one or better. Um, let's see how we go. If we don't pass the first time, I'll start using the flashlight. So we will investigate, minus one or better. Chaos Bag gives us a skull, which of course uh, is zero because there are no ghoul enemies at your location. So we succeed and we uh, get the first clue. Fantastic. Do it again, minus one or better. Three versus two, and we get a minus two and we fail. Let's just go ahead and do a minus one or better again. And we get a minus two again, so we failed. Oh my goodness, it's gonna be one of those. There we go, so that's the end of our turn. We, um, yes, so we're still in the study. Uh, we have one clue, um, so, uh, but we're still in the study, uh, yet to leave. Uh, we got one clue and then we failed twice. So uh, things are going a little bit on the slow side for Tony. Um, but in the investigator games, you have to be fast. If we can get some of those, um, get out of study and get Flesh Eater or Icy Ghoul, uh, we could actually end up with more victory points anyway. So that might be the way to go. Speaking of which, we move into the enemy phase. There are, of course, no enemies to speak of, so we move into the upkeep phase. We'll flip these over, take another resource, plenty of resources, and draw a card, and we draw into a knife. Oh, well, at least that's a weapon of some kind. So that's good. We'll bring out the knife. It's hardly a gun, but it's better than a kick in the pants. Um, yeah, so uh, let's move into the Mythos phase. So we will shift back up to here. There are two Doom now. We are in turn three. This will flip next time. Let's see what the Encounter deck has for us. The Encounter deck has Ancient Evils. Well, it's going to flip this time. So uh, that's moving fast and we are moving slow. So that's the three. Flip this over. Your house continues to change before your very eyes as you slowly move about the study looking for clues. The walls have decayed and the ground in many rooms has turned to dirt. It's almost as if you've been transported somewhere else entirely, although every now and again you recognise elements of your former home. Ah, there's the, uh, there's the firing range. Ah, that's where I keep my twin colts in the case. The lead investigator must discard, decide either... Discard a card at random from his or her hand or take two horror. We will be discarding a card at random. There's no way we can afford with a five horror to take any more horror. Because if we take two horror there and then we go into the attic, that's three horror. We're really kind of pushing our luck a little bit. And we've got no allies to soak things up. So that's down to zero. Um, so um, I think it was one card at random. So let's um, let's just put our cards here. Let's flip them over. Let's give them a good shuffle. And what do we lose? Pickpocketing, great. So I'm gonna, oh, it's a useless card anyway. So I'm not unhappy about that. 
Okay, um, so let's just go back up. So we are now in Rise of the Ghouls. The floor beneath you is giving way, and you see a vast network of tunnels twisting into the darkness below. Shapes and silhouettes of strange creatures move swiftly through the tunnels, trying to find a way up. Hmm, I probably don't want to be here when they do. There we go. So we are now into Rise of the Ghouls. We are yet to advance the act deck. Um, and that was because of uh, that, so we don't draw an encounter card. So we move into the good old investigation phase. So first action, I am going to spend one. No, hello, should be six. I'm going to spend one and bring out the knife. So I've got something. Second action, I am actually going to use my um, use my flashlight. So that basically means it's a shroud of zero. Yep. So let's go ahead and investigate. And we get a minus one. Didn't need to, but we succeed. So we get that second clue. Great. Let's just think about this. So we um, we brought out the knife and we um, investigated. So let's throw those in. Uh, excellent. So let's let's do that. Yeah. You notice that the edges of your newly purchased rug are tattered and mud-stained. Finding this odd, that's odd. You shift the furniture aside and pull back the rug. To your surprise, you see a door leading out of your study. You slowly turn the knob, and the door swings open, revealing your hallway below. I hope he wasn't standing on the door when it happened. But anyway, you jump through the doorway, landing on your feet on soft dirt. The door to the study slams shut above you. The smell of burning wood fills the narrow hall, intermingled with the scent of rot and decay. Put the set-aside hallway, cellar, attic, and parlour into play. Discard the each enemy in the study. Place each investigator in the hallway and remove the study from the game. So uh, let's do that now. So boing, we're in the hallway, flip the hallway, everything's here, study gone. Bye. Okay, um, yep. The barrier. A glowing barrier blocks the path to your parlour. As you move towards it, intense heat forces you to back away. Picking up a handful of dirt, you toss it at the barrier and watch in horror as the dirt incinerates. Can dirt incinerate? I guess it can if it's hot enough. Perhaps there's something in the cellar or attic that can help. When the round ends, investigators in the hallway as a group may spend the requisite number of clues to advance. Cool. Well, Tony, we better get a move on because we're not getting very far. So let's flip this final one. Let's just shift up to here. Let's move up to the attic. La -dee -da, -dee da Flip. Yeah, two clues. Victory one. Forced after you enter the attic, take a horror. There we go. <gasps> Malformed beast. Okay, so there we go. So that was a slightly better round, I suppose. We got ourselves out a knife. We then use our flashlight to find the final clue in the study. Got out of the study and into the hallway, and then we moved up to the attic. So that's the end of our turn. So there are no enemies to speak of still, even though we're supposed to be a bounty hunter. So let's move into the upkeep phase. Flip these over. Take another resource, draw a card, and we draw into Tony's 38 Long Colt at last. Fantastic. Um, it has three ammo, though. So what I might do, I think what I'm thinking is, is when the Ghoul Priest comes out, I think you can like put up to three. Whoops. Move one to three bounties. Yeah, so I think we just... Put a bunch of bounties on and then we can um then we can use that there um hopefully we might get both and then we can plug the uh, ghoul priest with 238 cults but we shall see how we go um yes but i suppose well i don't want to use the 38 cult on you know just rats and things so let's keep the knife for now and keep the 38 cult for when we really need it. We've got the vicious blow, uh, etc. Yeah. 
Okay, so that's that's positive. We're moving in the right direction, at least with, with uh, weaponry, if not allies. Okay, so that's the end of the upkeep phase. So we move into the mythos phase. Let's move up here. So we are in turn four, one doom. Um, yes. So uh, let's see what the good old encounter deck has for us. And the encounter deck has a, well, 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 a ghoul minion. The ghoul minion. There we go. Ghoul minion. Two, two, two. So we can move one to three bounties to an enemy. Maximum of that enemy's health. Well, it's got a health of two. So let's move two across. Let's move two bounties across. Very nice. I think we've done this right. You may take an additional action during your turn, which means to engage and fight an enemy with one or more bounties. Tick. Fantastic. We put the bounties on, and if we defeat the enemy, move its bounties to your resource pool. Fantastic. Okay, all good. All right, now we're cooking with gas. Um, fantastic. All right. That's the mythos phase. So we move into the... Um, we move into our phase, to the investigation phase. So here we are with this ghoul minion. So first of all, we are going to take an additional turn. So our first turn will be an additional turn. And we're going to fight an enemy here. So we've got a knife. Um, so we get plus one for the attack. Um, but of course, we don't get plus one damage unless we discard the knife. Um, I don't feel like we should discard the knife right now. We'll get an additional action anyway. So let's just go ahead and fight the good old ghoul. So the ghoul is a two, and we are a six. So a two versus a six. Uh, yeah, so uh, this is the extraction. So two versus six, minus four or better. Chaos bag gives us a minus three. Yep, so we succeed. So that's a damage on the ghoul minion. Oops. Then we will fight again. We'll do the same thing again. Two versus six. Uh, that's a, uh, yeah, I think that's fine. Minus one. Yep, we succeed. So, um, so indeed, the ghoul is dead. So we get two resources for that. I um, can just delete these now. So that's nice. We get the bounty. And the ghoul minion is dead. There we go. So that was all fantastic. Yeah, yeah, I think we did everything right. After you defeat an enemy, one or more bounties on it, move the bounties to your resource pool of resources. I've got lots of resources. If only we had Leo DeLuca. Okay, so we've got two actions left because we've got an extra action. So I think the obvious thing to do is to get these clues. So it's a shroud of one. Uh, we are a three, so it's a minus two or better. I don't think we use the flashlight for this. So minus two or better, we investigate and we get another minus one. So we succeed and then we'll do it again. I'll just do it now here and we get a skull. So we succeed twice. We get both of those clues, which is, oops, which is fantastic. Which is fantastic because that means that, um, that we have a victory point and the crowd goes wild. Yay! Woo, woo, woo. We get two clues. Brilliant. Okay. Well, that was a much, much better round because actually things happened. So we took an extra turn to knife the ghoul minion. And we knifed the ghoul minion again and killed the ghoul minion and got the bounties. So we now have nine resources. Just nothing to spend them on. Uh, and we uh, we had two turns left, so we uh, successfully investigated twice. Uh, and we got a victory point. All good. So uh, things going a little bit better for Tony this turn. So we move into the enemy phase. No enemies to speak of, so we move into upkeep. Flip. Mm -hmm. Get another resource. And we will draw another card. And we draw into a Guts, which can be very helpful. But no Leo DeLuca, unfortunately. But anyway. 
Um, excellent. So we uh, move into the Mythos phase. Let's shift up to here. Turn 5. To Doom. Let's see what the good old Encounter deck has for us. And it has a Crypt Chill. Well, that uh, Guts came at exactly the right time. So this is Test 4. Um, have I been... I didn't have any events, did I? Asset. In fact, that's the only thing. No. And I don't think I have any events. So again, this is a bit strange because we've got no events. Anyway. Uh, okay, Crook Chill. Test 4 if you fail. Okay, so we have got Guts. So we will commit Guts, which gives us a 4 versus a 4. So it's still only an even, but I don't want to commit the Long Cult to this. And it's not the end of the world if we had to get rid of something. Um, what do we get? Minus two. So we do fail. Uh, so we do have to discard an asset we control. So either the knife or the flashlight. We've got another flashlight, haven't we? Or this, which isn't really doing very much, to be honest. I mean, it's possible we'll get some events at some other time. Um, probably the flashlight. We don't need the flashlight. So let's get rid of the flashlight. Let's discard that. It's probably the easiest one to um, get rid of. There we go. Okay, so that's good old Crypt Chill. So we move into the investigation phase. Three actions for Tony. Oops. So we're here up in the attic. So we might as well move down to the hallway, our first action, and then move down to the cellar. Donk, donk, donk. And of course, uh, as we are going down the cellar, we're so busy rifling through our manila folders of bounties that we don't look where we're going and we trip on the step and go tumbling down the stairs and we take a damage. Youch. So that was uh, move and move. So we've got one action left, which I guess will bring out the flashlight. Yep. We'll bring out the other flashlight. So there we go. We'll be ready to get these clues down in the cellar. Okay, so that was uh, that was pretty sort of standard uh, standard go. We just moved from the attic to the hallway and then down to the cellar, and then we um, took a damage and we brought out the flashlight. Okay, there are no enemies to speak of. It would be great to get the Icy Ghoul, anyway. So we move into the upkeep phase. We will flip these over. <coughs> Excuse me. One resource. Draw a card. What do we get? He's here. The man has arrived. Better late than never, as they say. Leo De Luca has arrived. Brilliant. Okay, so let's move into the Mythos phase. So we are in turn six, three doom, about halfway through. And uh, what do we get? We get uh, dissonant voices, still lies. Okay, can't play assets or events. Bugger. <laughs> that was going to bring out Leo. Anyway, doesn't matter. Okay. So we move into the investigation phase, three actions. So let's just go ahead and investigate um, the cellar. We're talking about a full shroud with two clues. So first action is to use the flashlight and see how we go. So we've reduced it down from four to two. So it's a two versus a three. A two versus a three. Chaos bag gives us a elder sign. Another elder sign, okay. So we can put another one of these on here and we succeed in getting the clue. Very nice. Good. Okay. There we go. Okay. Let's do it again. Let's uh, let's use the flashlight again. So a two versus a three minus one or better, and I think that is a minus one if I'm not mistaken. It is. So we succeed again. And we get the final clue. Yay! Fantastic. We've got all of the clues, which means. Um, Hello, Tabletop Simulator. Here we go. We got our second victory point. Yay! So there's two victory points. Very good. 
Okay, uh, we've got one action left, so we could either stay in the cellar, or we could um, move up. Now, the only reason why I might want to stay in the cellar, I suppose, is if we get the Icy Ghoul. Um, is that likely? We can always move back, I suppose. We've got plenty of health. So I suppose worst case scenario, if we had to, we could move back down. So I might do that. I'll just move up, move up to the hallway and prepare. We're definitely not going to take on the Ghoul Priest this time because what I want is Leo De Luca and I want the Long Colt out. But I think once we've got both of those out, I think we're in a pretty okay position with the Vicious Blow, especially to finish off the Ghoul Priest, but not this time. Okay, so that's the end of our turn. So that was pretty successful. We, um, it's the end of our turn or the end of the round? End of the round. We um, investigated twice with the flashlight and succeeded, and then we moved into the hallway. There we go. So we've, and we got another victory point for doing that. Okay. So we move into the enemy. There's no enemies to speak of. So we move into the upkeep phase, flip these over, get another resource, draw a card, and we draw into hard knocks, which actually, given how many resources we've got, is brilliant. Uh, just what we need. So we can get ourselves set up really basically with Leo, Hard Knox, and Tony, and we are right to take on the Ghoul Priest. Let's discard this. Of course, famous last words, of course, because we still need to um, see what the Mythos phase has for us. Uh, we are in turn seven for Doom. Let's see what the Mythos phase has for us. And the Mythos phase has, ah, Grasping Hands. Yes, Grasping Hands, test three, we are a two. Fortunately, we don't have hard knocks out at the moment, um, and I don't want to commit it to this, so I think we just take the damage. So three versus two, and we get a zero. Wow, that was pretty lucky, so we just take one damage for that. Okay, there we go. That's the end of uh, the Mythos phase. So we move into the Investigation phase. We are here in the hallway. And I think we can set ourselves up and bring out the Ghoul Priest. So let's let's do that. So first action, first action is we will pay two, and we will bring out. No, we will bring out. Sorry, we'll pay six, two, three, four, five, six. We'll bring out Leo De Luca. So that immediately gives us an extra action. Where's the action? Just gonna borrow someone else's action. Let's take that. Let's put it there. And leave it neutral though, so we know it's the extra action. So that's the first thing that we do. Um, the second thing that we will do is we will pay three. And we will uh, we'll replace the uh, flashlight with Tony's uh, Long Colt. Now it says after play, Tony's like, play another Long Colt from your hand. Well, I don't have it. And it's got three ammo. It's got three ammo. Uh, so that's our second action. Um, for our third action, um, I guess we gain a resource. Yep. And for our final action, we will spend the two resources and bring out hard knocks. That just allows us to just, if we've got any resources, we can uh, spend them. And with bounties and things, that might happen. So there we go. Those are our four actions. So we got ourselves, we, we spent our 10, 11 resources. So we brought out Leo De Luca. We then, that was six of our resources. Then we spent three on bringing out the cult. Then we took another resource and then we brought out Hard Knocks. So I think we're right for the Ghoul Priest now. I think we've 
got everything we need. We've got vicious blows. We'll have hard knocks. We uh, we're already a fight of five, which means we're ahead of the ghoul priest. So we should, as long as everything goes our way, we should be okay. I think. Uh, I think so. So I think um, that's the end of our investigation phase. So we move into the enemy phase. There are no enemies. So we move into upkeep. So we'll flip these over. We will take a resource. We'll draw a card and we draw into a perception. Well, that's useless. <laughs> Overpower would have been nice. Perception, useless. And I just realized I'm pretty sure when I played the guts, I didn't draw a card. But it's too late now. Doesn't matter. Um, but I've just realized I didn't think I played that card. Damn it. Oh, we failed. That's why. We failed. Of course we did. We didn't pass the guts. That's why. Okay, all good. All right, so it's the end of the upkeep phase. So let's spend the um, the requisite number of clues to advance. So that's the three clues. So let's shift up to here. So we've done this. So we can flip this over. And using the barrel from the attic, you carry ice and snow from the cellar and hurl it at the barrier. The barrier sparks and shudders as it consumes the ice and then hisses and fades out of existence. The barrier blocking the passage into the parlour has vanished. Reveal the parlour. Put Leader Chandler in the parlour and the ghoul priest in the hallway. Doom, 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 doom. Okay. Well, there's the ghoul priest. Let's grab Lita. Not sure why there's two copies of the Ghoul Priest, but that's fine. Let's take these two. Okay, so Lita sits in the parlor. <coughs> Let's move the Ghoul Priest to us in our thread area. Oh, hello, Tony. Oh. Now, I think it says, after you've, uh, after I'm in display, one to three bounties. Well, let's put three bounties on the good old ghoul priest. Might as well. Three bounties on the ghoul priest. Yeah, lots of money for him. Yeah, I'm worth a lot. And, uh, and, uh, yes. So there we go. Um, okay. That's the end of the upkeep phase. We are ready to go. Ready to go. Let's move into the mythos phase. So let's shift up here. We're in turn eight. Not bad. Five doom. Yes, so this was moving ahead reasonably fast. Let's see what the good old encounter deck has. And the encounter deck has oh God, another grasping hands. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh. Um, okay, test three, we're a two. So do we use this resource to... I don't think we do. I think we keep that for fighting. Let's just do two versus three. We get a minus three. So we are only a two. So that's zero versus three. So we take three points of damage. Ouch. That's actually quite bad. But anyway, well, let's hope we don't get too many retaliations from the cool priest. But we've got... Actually, I've just realized we've got Leo DeLuca. So... We've got some soak from that perspective as well. Okie dokie. So that's the mythos phase. That was a bit nasty. So let's move into the investigation phase. Now we have four actions, but we actually have five actions because, because you can take an additional action when used to engage fighting an enemy. So that's what we're going to do first. We're going to use that additional action to fight the ghoul priest. We're going to use our long cult to blast at the ghoul priest. So that gives us a fight of five, and this here gives us uh, six. Oh no, plus one for each bounty. So actually that gives us a five, six, seven, eight. So that's an eight. Wow, that's great. That's an eight versus a five. I'm going to make it, of course, a nine versus a five, because I want to use the vicious blow. So that's nine versus five. So that's a minus four or better. I think that's pretty good. Nine versus five. So this is our free action. Uh, Chaos bag gives us a plus one. We just blow that ghoul priest to smithereens. So we do one, two, three points of damage. Wow. 
He's he's going down. Ow! That really hurt. Hello, tabletop simulator. Oh, there we go. So he takes three points of damage. That was our first action. Our second action. Oh, I did it again. It always does that. We will uh, do that again. So, uh, yeah. So five, eight. That is right, isn't it? Plus one for each bounty on the attacked enemy. Yeah, eight. So that's eight. Uh, we will spend a resource. Give us nine. So again, it's nine uh, versus five. This is it. If, uh, if this succeeds, uh, then the ghoul priest is gone. Crowd goes hushed. Tony fires his 38 and the ghoul priest, yes, goes down. There was, a, you know, chances was he was. So there we go. There's the five points of damage. Ah! Tony gets three resources as a bounty. Excellent. There we go. Ghoul priest is in the... Uh, And there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That's it. We succeeded in... Um, Tony did pretty well in the end. I mean, we could have held out, I suppose, for a flesh eater or an icy ghoul to try to get more victory points, but there's no guarantee we could have been waiting and waiting and waiting, so it seemed like a better idea to just move ahead. Um, so we got the requisite um, three victory points, is it four victory points? No, it's so four victory points plus the two for, for finishing. So that's the six victory points. And I think we uh, reasonably, yes, we finished in turn eight. I have to review the video, but I'm pretty sure we finished in turn eight. So we did that pretty fast. So that puts us there with Ash, Cam, Pete uh, and Tommy, I think. Um, so all good. So that was really, really fast. And that was with the... Um, with the um, ancient evils, so we could have done it faster if that hadn't popped up. So that all went very, very well and very smoothly. We had a bit of a slow start with Tony, but once things got going, I can see that um, these bounties can be a really nice way of generating extra resources, which can then be used for all kinds of purposes. Uh, so that worked reasonably well. So thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Next time, let's let's change the pace a little bit. Next time, and let's go for a seeker. So next time, we will be taking Mandy Thompson through the gathering, uh, a scholar and assistant, and we'll see how she goes uh, in the investigator games. But until then, I'm Krabby Terror Eight. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.